Welcome to day two. The power we're going to explore in this video is the power of exploration. You know, at this point we talked about it's not enough to decide to get playing, that you need to be crystal clear on your intention for playing. So what is your intention for your creative time? And be able to clearly affirm what you want to do with your creative time. So for example, it could be I am letting loose and fearlessly expressing my unique mark on the canvas. Before we get into the power of exploration, I wanna share with you something very special. So it's my four step painted play process. The painted play process. Are you excited? This is the play process I use to paint my unique mark. And this is the play process I'm sharing with you so you can paint your unique mark. And it absolutely works for painting any subject matter and any idea. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. So identifying your intention and affirming what you want with your creative time. This is the first step. It's to identify your intention. What would you like to show up on the canvas? What marks are you allowing to be created? And guess what? You already did this in step one. Step two is exploring your mark. So it's focused on playing with exploring your mark on the canvas. And I do this for about 25 to 90 minutes. Uh, if you know, if I'm looking at like a two hour time period of, that I have for painting. And this is exactly how you get what's unique to you onto your canvas. And this is exactly what we will focus on in the next three videos. So step three is playing with layers and layering your mark. So one of the biggest mistakes people make at the canvas uh, is ignoring step number two, the most important step. If you miss or skip step number two, you'll get what more than 80% of creative painters in the world get wrong. They step into the painting process with their intention to follow their creative voice and then get stuck painting it the way others say it should be painted or worse yet, the way their inner critic, that little voice inside their head, says to paint it. They default to paint in a way so that it looks the way their inner critic thinks it should. And do you see, they ignore step number two and instead choose what is expected for getting to step number three, the quote, how everybody else does it way, the unadventurous way. And this is what painters of the canvas get wrong. They set out to paint something that's never been painted before and default to their inner critic, which leads to creating something that might look good, but lacks authenticity. So does this make sense? This is the exact process I follow for every painting um, that I paint. So let's look at step number two in more detail. Step number two, what this means is you need to get past the fear of making the mark, where you get into the flow of creative expression, where you will fo uh, focus on discovering and exploring. And here are just a few ideas to get started. Playing with the paintbrush. So let's see if I can get this video going. Here we go. It's got to think, think, think. So exploring the mark of the paintbrush, letting loose, letting go. At this point, you're not creating anything specific or doing anything compositional. You know, instead you're just playing around. And at the same time, you're igniting the connection with your creative voice, which keeps you in the painting process and unleashes the play that is happening on the canvas. And in this process, you've shown your power to express yourself and paint. Uh, here are some examples I've used to explore my unique mark on the canvas. So playing with circles, uh, playing just with the different ways that the paintbrush can make a mark. So the circles, using the opposite side of the paintbrush to make dots, uh, using uh, the tip of the paintbrush to make thin lines, or pushing down and making thicker lines. Here I'm using a stencil. So another way. How about playing with your fingers? Finger painting, oh my gosh, so much fun. Pick up a color and smush it around the canvas with a finger. I painted a little here and a little there, but mainly tried to let the creative genius inside me speak through the first layer of finger painting. So do you see how you can add this technique to your favorite ways to play so you can connect with your creative voice and begin building your layers, which once built upon leads you to the finished canvas? And do you see how you can connect with what excites you? I hope so. All right, here's another one, playing with stencils. Now, before I send you off to do your assignment, I want to bring up an incredibly important point. So did you notice that all the techniques I showed you as examples have something in common? Did you know what it is? 
If you guess that they are all techniques that can be layered, then you are right. And they are also individual techniques to add to your playbook. In other words, I'm always discovering and exploring new techniques. They are individual layering techniques and also techniques that contribute to your play. That's because when it comes to unleashing your play, there's nothing that compares to painting authentically with your mark. And that's the power we are focusing on this video. All right, let's look at it in a bit more detail. First, why explore? So the power of exploration, you know, just think of it. Are you more likely to identify your unique mark in a painting like uh, that expresses your unique mark or in a painting that looks like everyone else's? So would you rather, you know, be able to express yourself with your unique mark? Or would you rather paint like everyone else? You know, why this works. Have you ever felt happy as you started out on a new adventure? Why, this is why exploration works. Like you were confronting the unknown, where taking risks felt exciting and new. Creating a beautiful piece of artwork that speaks to who you are really isn't some magic trick. It's the mark, it's all in the mark. For more than a century, skilled artists have used their unique mark to compose beautiful pieces of art. The mark is a basic building block of all visual art. It is an important element in any composition that creates interest and captures the interest of the viewer. So if you want to get playing, you have to explore your mark. And that means using techniques with the paintbrush, your fingers, stencils, color, textures, layers. Now, here's another fact. The majority of artwork created isn't unique. That means that art, is, art that is being made is copied. Uh, so if you want to make your unique mark and you want to look at your piece as a, an original, you need to listen to your creative voice. Everyone has a unique creative voice because no two lives and no two stories are the same. And when you find this voice, uh, you know, is more than artistic adventure. You know, it can also be a route to healing and a way of validating your own unique presence in the world. Whether you want to share your art with friends and family or you want to sell your work, being genuine, letting that creative voice show up on the canvas is the major way <clears throat> to differentiate your art. So this is where it all comes together. To let loose on the canvas, to unleash your painted play, to create interest on your canvas with your creative voice as your guide. This is how you play with paint. You need to listen to your creative voice. And if you've never done this before, don't worry. There are plenty of easy ways you can listen to your creative voice. For example, just have a conversation with it. And now I get to challenge you. Your assignment after you finish watching this video is to explore your unique mark that lets your creative voice speak. Grab your canvas, start painting, start exploring, use what you have, your paintbrush, a finger, a stencil. Let your play unfold with no end result in mind. Simply play. And once you're done, if you'd like to post it to our day two thread of our painted canvas challenge inside our Facebook, I invite you to do so and share your progress. All right, have fun and I'll see you on Facebook.